Well, I, I actually got sent off and it, it, it was for apparently sticking my tongue into another place. <laughs> I've had to live with that for a long, long time. But it certainly wasn't that. There was no contact. <laughs> it was a gesture. It was a sliding challenge by Diaz. Morrison gets to that one. Ruben. Andy. Good, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good man. Grab a seat. Let's go. Let's get these questions going. Let's go. So I'm going to start off with. Okay. Ah, good start. What is it about defending that you love? <laughs> Many different details, but probably the one I like the most is when I start to see out of the control I can influence, I start to see frustrations on my opponent's faces. Mm. When I start to see that frustration, I feel like I'm crushing them. Yeah. I love it. Mm. I love it. So in a game, the feeling I most like to bring on is when they just feel like they don't stand a chance. Yeah. They can't get in. And you feel that evolve in the game. You feel that materialize where I've got him. You know, they're now, they're down. The energy's not there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. For me, um, what do I love about defending? I think, like I say, the, the, the systems are changed. You know, n now you're never sure, false nine, whatever, what rotations. But for me, when I played, I'm up against a nine. And I was obsessed from a child with the nine. Um, just beat him, just dominate him, and I've done my job, and everything else yeah. will, will, will fall into place. And then, um, you know, as a schoolboy, I remember turning up and looking at the opposition coming out, looking for the nine on his back. That's who I've got to beat today. Yeah. And then I, I followed that through my career. You know, I'd know it, you know, you'd know in midweek who the striker is at the weekend, and, and you, you're already mentally preparing. Wednesday, Thursday, you're thinking about how you're going to dominate him. And, and then the satisfaction of actually completing that, you've done your job. And if you've got seven or eight players on the pitch, you have dominated their opposition or their area, you've got a great chance of winning. No. Yeah. Good. All right, my turn. What is the biggest change in football since you started playing, watching? Gosh, I think the, um, <laughs> you know, as coaching and managing now, I, I, I look at... Uh, I think the, 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 the space on the pitch has been so squeezed to, to destroy any space. I'd be on the halfway line with another centre half, full back tucked in, full back on that side joining in, and you'd be watching the cross going into the box, and you're only worried about the two strikers. Yeah, There's not, yeah. because we didn't, you know, we didn't look after the ball so much as what you do now. You know, it was always 4 4 2 against 4 4 2 back then, so you knew how you were set up. The game's just evolved so much. And, and I just think, you know, the way it's gone over the last 10 years, where do we go next yeah. to find that pocket of space to, yeah. to suffocate the opposition, to make it more difficult? For me, uh, I would focus on something else in terms of what's changed since way back, in terms of how aggressive you can be. As a, as a central yeah. defender, you can imagine, with mm. VAR, imagine today yeah. playing. Yeah every little touch every little thing yeah like the emotional control you need to have and yeah. i see so many legends that were made especially as a defender so many legends that were made through that aggressiveness yeah and so much of it it's not allowed today you just can't. yeah it's it's not but ruben you, you still think that that f that five nine battle is still there no 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 100 percent. and yeah. and watching the game at the weekend and you're watching the two center halves against Erling and when the ball's out wide, there, there, there's a dance going on in the box where yeah. it's trying to find half a yard just in case it comes in. Yeah. And uh, the detail is incredible yeah. and uh, it's wonderful to watch. Yeah, agreed. What was the highest point in your career? Well, I think uh, that's an easy one. Uh, treble. Uh, I, I think the, when the referee whistled, final of the Champions League means you've won the treble. Yeah. That first. 10 seconds of emotions, you don't even know if you should laugh, cry, whatever. Yeah. I think that would be uh, my that highest moment. Point. Yeah, and then obviously the uh, the days that follow it, everything just comes yeah, away, doesn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. then you get the truth of it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Like the, the following days when you start to, when it starts to settle, like what you've just done. Um, my highest point is yeah. slightly different to yours, um, but you know, I, I captain City at uh, Wembley in 99. Okay. And um, and lifting the trophy, you know, in front of our fans after being two 0 down, going into the 90th minute, okay. um, and then obviously Kevin Horlock scored, Paul Dickoff, and got the equaliser, and then we won on penalties, and, it, and we were promoted the following year back into the okay. the Premier League. So you know that was uh, yeah that was a magical moment, and it was the end of a for me a personal 
um, journey that season. Um, and it was all worth it in the end, you know, because uh, the fans rightly got what they deserved. What was the lowest point in your career? <laughs> <laughs> We've got to go highest to lowest. Um, I think the lowest point for me was really, you know, being told by, um, by the surgeon, you know, that the knee's done, you can't play, you know. And How old were you? Uh, 30, 30, okay. just then 31. And, um, and the realisation, I, I, remember, I remember having the operation, I remember coming round from the anaesthetic and then waiting for the doctor, like, you know, and, and you fear the worst um, because you've had 10, 11 operations by then on your left knee. And then the surgeon came in and he, he kind of like can't really look at you. And, uh, and I said, what's what, you know, where are we at? And he, and he said, you won't play again, not with that knee. And, uh, and then they walk out the room and it's their job. It's just part of their role. And you're just left there like, you know, on your own thinking, what now? <laughs> what do I yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. All I've ever done is play football. And, um, and the realisation that, you know, your life's going to go in another direction. Um, and that was really, really tough, really tough. But so from then on, it was end of career? Yeah, I tried to get, I, I tried to get back, um, but... What yeah. was it? It was, uh, it, was, it was the articular cartilage. So all the cartilage are worn okay, away. Right. So bone on bone. And then that bone gets drilled and then they fill that and then them fill that. Yeah, and eventually yeah, it just yeah. crumbles. Um, and it's always the left knee for us center out to jump off the left knee. Yeah. So that was always the area. But yeah, that was a low point. Yeah. yeah. My career still has a lot, uh, a lot to, to happen. But when I was starting at Benfica, uh, I started it. So when you go from the youth, you then join B team. But on the B team, you're already play, playing professionally. So in Portugal, on the B team, you're playing like second division. So here, championship. Yeah. And uh, I can see that my, can, if, if taking out the youth games, I can see that that already part of my career. Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing not to be relegated. Mm. And that was mm. difficult. Yeah. At the same time, I'm putting it, I'm putting it as a, a low moment. But at the same time, for me, it was a lot of learning. And it was Absolutely. a very yeah. special moment in my career. Because mm -hmm. from then on, what happened next, I owe, I owe it a lot to that mm -hmm. moment. Like what I went through, the way I started to understand personalities that were behind me, the ones yeah. that step forward, the ones yeah. that don't. And uh, at the end of the day, I take it as something really good that happened in my career, even though you never want to be relegated and happily we managed not to. Yeah. But the fight, yeah. when you're there, it looks like everything happens. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I think that would be, that would be my name. Yeah. What's the strangest red card you've received? Okay, I heard a good story about you, so go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, quite uh, <laughs> yeah, infamous. Um, well, I, I actually got sent off and it, it, it was for apparently sticking my tongue into another place. <laughs> I, 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 what, what happened was I'd, I'd been yellow carded in the, in the first half, just a, a standard challenge or whatever. And in the second half, I got into a bit of a dispute with them. Um, I think Stan Collymore, uh, we were playing Fulham away. And, um, and my gesture basically was, I've got you licked. I said, you know, you're not at a kick all afternoon, like, so quieting down. And, uh, and he said, you what? Like, and, and I said, I've got you licked. So I made a licking gesture, which is as outrageous as it sounds. And the, and the, the referee um, came across and pulled out a yellow card. But I think when he pulled the yellow card out, he realized that my name's on it and he's gonna have to red card me. So it went down as, um, sticking my tongue down in another place <laughs> but it was it was never like that and um so yeah. a bit of fake rumors 100 percent you know and, I've, and uh, I've had to live with that for a long long time but it certainly wasn't that there was no contact <laughs> it was a gesture when is it enough when do you think you feel satisfied enough to retire <laughs> quite a deep question yeah very deep one i've thought about it is it is it is it physical or is it um, is it achievement wise? Have you set yourself caps? Have you set yourself record I've, uh, appearances? I've thought about a lot about it, and at the end of the day, I think it's an answer that you will only know when the time comes. But yeah. still, it really goes in between. Can't I do it anymore? Yeah. Or I want to stop while I'm top. Yeah. I would say. I would love to finish on top. Brilliant. Do you think you achieved everything you wanted in, uh, to in your career? Um, gosh, what a question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I look at it from two aspects. Um, I think with the, 
the challenges I had in my life to achieve what I actually achieved, I think is remarkable. Um, but I think with the talent I had, I think I underachieved. I should have done so much more. Okay. Um, I should have played for my country numerous times. I should have done, you know, I went, I went to Blackburn into the Premier League with Kenny Dalglish in 92, but it never kicked on because of the challenges that I had in my life and the things that the adversity I had to come o overcome. So in that sense, incredible achievement. But I think if I'd, um, if I'd seen the light a bit earlier in my career, I think I could have achieved so much more. I had I had my brother uh, playing more or less the same time. He finished. He decided to stop. Now he's two years uh, older than me. At some point, when I came here, he still came with me. He was playing in Rochdale. He ended up having a difficult season. He then decided to stop. But he always had a, a different level of where I was. Yeah. And I think also because of him, I appreciated so much more where I was. Mm -hmm. And I saw so many people that were with me that had no idea what was below them. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I think for me, that was something that throughout my career really helped me. And then I think it's, it's the answer you said before. Uh, at the end of the day, in terms of feeling like you've achieved something, yeah. you, you've, you've pushed yourself until I, I, you, can't, you can't tell me that you've, from what I know now, you can't tell me that you've not pushed yourself until the limit. And yeah. then sometimes it's, I don't know, little yeah. timings, little Absolutely. Uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's your journey, it's your path. Exactly. At the end of the day, we have to be prepared. We have to yeah. do and be the best version of ourselves, but... See where it goes. Yeah. Oh, I can answer this one for you. <laughs> it says, do you think you could have played in the 99 City team? And let me tell you straight away, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't moving Jared Vikens out alongside me and you're not moving me out of the team. So unless Maybe three? <laughs> we we'll go five? We'll I'll, play five. Three. <laughs> I'll, I'll fit you on the right side of me and I'll sit in the middle and Jared on the left. Okay, okay, okay. I'm happy with that. You know, football's moved on a lot since then. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you could play in the more than City team? Oh, <laughs> do you know what? I thought every time I watch City and I'm thinking just the way it's ingrained from such a young age and you can almost seamlessly come into that team and know how they're going to play and know what the patterns are. You know, you're going to occasionally get yourself exposed, you know, but not as often as, uh, you know, as, um, as what we would back in, in my yeah, day because yeah. I think the units move so quick now. Oh, I'm going to have to be honest and say no. You know, but I, I'm, I make the squad. <laughs> I'm getting the squad. Ruben, so good to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Big pleasure. And good man. Uh, I hope to, to keep in touch. Keep fighting the cause. Big pleasure. Yeah, I will. Okay.